recording. All right. So um, the next thing that I want to do is kind of uh, show you some more about list um, manipulation and restructuring. But I want to do it um, I want to do it with a different kind of geometry. Well, do I want to go there yet? Yeah, I'll go there. Um, so I want to do it with a different kind of geometry. Um, we're going to now look at uh, rectangles, and it's also going to introduce you to the idea of a domain. Right? It's a, it's a very, very important part of Grasshopper, and it's another very, very fundamental kind of idea. Okay. Um, so if you want to, feel free to uh, group this and turn it off. Um, or you could start a new file if you're so inclined. But I'm going to uh, name this one I'm going to call it Basic Pattern Logic. So now for the uh, for the second for the second definition here, I'm going to uh, use either a square or a rectangle. It doesn't um, pattern. Uh, sorry, a grid. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one. I think because we're going to operate with domains now, it probably makes sense to use rectangle um, because the rectangle function is um, well. We'll get there anyway. So let's populate the rectangle first. Um, the rectangle's functions are basically that it has the base plane um, and it also has now a size in the x and the y direction as well as a count in the x and the y direction. So now we're going to need four sliders um, and again keeping things simple 0 to 10 just for these ones. So just make sure the grid actually appears to be kind of rectilinear in a way. <clears throat> and so what we're going to do at this point is to look at the way that you can start to develop an actual geometry off of it, right? Like a, a, a real built element, something that has you know, either a planar um, element to it or, you know, like a, a surface of some sorts. So we have cells and we have points. We have the ability to either um, do a point-based system or we have the ability to do a cell-based system. Since we've been working with points, I'm going to use that now. So the points themselves are what I'm going to generate a rectangle off of. So if I go to um, curve again, and I go back to primitive, you'll see that there's this function for a rectangle. When you drop that in, it's going to ask for the base plane as well as the x size and the y size. But let's take a look at what it's actually asking for. So this icon right here is not a number. It looks a little different. So read a little bit further and we'll see why. The dimensions of a rectangle in plane x direction. So be aware that it says dimensions plural. Because in the x direction it doesn't just have one direction. It might only have one direction, but ultimately it has two directions. It has your positive and your negative direction. So. Um, when I plug my rectangle into the points, what you'll see is that um, it places, oh, that's really hard to see when I select it. Um, it places a rectangle at every single one of the points, and that's all well and good. But what you realize is that it is centered on those points. 
if I let me increase the size this way. There you go. That's easier to see. So if I increase the size to a point where the default value is um, smaller than the cell itself, you can see that it's it's very clearly that it's centered at every single one of the points of this grid. That's important to note because if I go over to my rectangle and I give it a um, and I give it a numerical slider, right? This is all we know so far. All we know is, is a slider or a panel with a static number. So I'm going to drop a slider in, 0 to 10. I'm going to plug it into x, and I'm going to plug it into y. And then bump up the number to something, keep it relatively small for now. What's different? Right, it's no longer in the center. So the reason it's no longer in the center, and I'm not going to you know, make it excruciating for you guys here. I'm just going to control Z back to where it was before. Um, the reason it's no longer in the center is because the X and the Y values are asking for a domain. It doesn't specifically say that, but when you see this right here, it says negative 1 to 1. That's what you would call a domain. Or technically, it's a range, but a range is a domain function. So your domain is negative one to one, and you can you can and in many cases should create a new domain for it. So, <clears throat> um, the domain function is actually under math functions, plural. So if, uh, if you go to math and you open up domain, this is a very important list for us. And I'm going to, when I introduce a new um, tool out of it, I'm going to explain it in a lot of detail. But right now we're going to use a very basic function from it, and it's called construct domain. Construct domain is going to allow us to basically take two numbers and plug them in and um, create a domain off of it. So um, it, it'll just generate a, a number and then a two number. So your minimum and your maximum value. Um, so I could do this with sliders. I could do it with a static number. It's up to you how you want to do it. Um, I'm going to do it the less smart way first, and then I'm going to show you a smarter way to make it centered at all times. Okay. So anyway, the, the less smart way is to say, I'm going to do a, a slider from negative 10 to 10. And I'm going to put a, um, I'll copy that down, and I'll put a, um, a slider into A at negative 10, and a slider into B, and move it up to positive 10. I made a slider, negative 10 to 10. So then it's as simple as let's plug it into um, x and let's uh, make a copy and plug it into y. And you'll notice that those are really, really huge at a value of 10. So um, move it down to something that's a little bit more palatable, like maybe a negative 2 or 3 and then a positive 2 or 3. Do the same thing for both. Actually, even that's too big. So I'm going to go to 2, 2, 2, 2. Let me pause for a moment while you all get caught up. All right, so after you've created the domain, the cool thing is, you know, now we have, we basically have a rectangle that's going, you know, negative two, positive two in both directions. Um, it is smart because now I have a slider. I can move it back and forth. I can change it readily in all cases at any time. Um, but what do I do um, or what can I do smarter here, right? If my rule set is I want it to be, 
I want my rectangle to be exactly on the center point um, in both directions at all times. That's true, yeah. I could um, convert this to x and y. However, that means that it's always going to be square because it has the same values for the x and the y direction. So, true, um, but it can be better if I want the rectangle ability. What's that? Using math? Yeah. That's correct, yes. Um, yeah, yes, you can use math. Um, the easiest way to do it, and I'm not going to, you know, just, I'm not going to torture you with trying to figure out which one, um, but the easiest way to do it is to just convert a number to a negative. So if I get rid of um, this negative value and that negative value, um, under the math and operators panel, panel, um, there's this tool right here. It's just called negative. All it does is it takes a positive number and converts it to a negative. So that way I don't have to move two sliders. I can move one slider in the positive direction and it'll automatically replicate that in the negative direction. So when I drop that in, it takes the form of an, uh, a value input and a value output. Just like list length, it's just one in, one out. So I take the uh, two and then I plug the negative into A and you see now it populates both sides. And I can uh, copy that down and I'll plug in this two and that A and even though this one right now is square, um, I can actually decrease or increase in either direction. <laughs> Any questions on that so far? Okay, so um, we're going to uh, do some more patterning on this particular um, exercise here in just a moment. <laughs>